Hi, this is Software Engineering for JO3, group number 22, presenting on the topic of Delta Modulation. My name is Yang Jingzhou. And my name is Ethan. For this presentation, we will start with explaining terminology of Delta Modulation. Then we will break down the system with block diagram and explain what we what with waveform to help us get a better understanding on the concept. There will be some limitations and issues on Delta Modulation. We will explain what they are, what is causing the issue, and what the solution can be. At last, we will show a simulation on MATLAB. We will briefly explain the code and show you the result on graph. Data modulation is a simplified form of postcode modulation. Data refers to amplitude difference, measured from one sample instance to next. Output is a bit stream of samples at a relative high rate to an approximate input analog signal but can never maintain exactly the same value. Delta modulation takes advantage of the fact that voice signals do not change abruptly. If so, it will have an issue, and this issue will be explained later on in this presentation. The value of each bit is determined according to whether the input message sample amplitude has increased or decreased relative to the previous sample, so that transmits information only to indicate whether the analog signal that is being encoded goes up or goes down. The encoder outputs are highs or lows that instruct whether to go up or down, respectively. The signal that can be decoded by a matched decoder on the receiver side in order to achieve data compression and therefore low data transmission rates. The analog signal is quantized by a one-bit analog to digital converter and the block diagram is shown below. The comparator output is converted back to an analog signal with one bit digital to analog converter, and is subtracted from the input after passing through an integrator. The shape of analog signal is transmitted as one indicates that a positive excursion has occurred since the last sample, and a zero indicates that a negative excursion has occurred since the last sample. This is a sketch to help to explain delta modulation. At each sample input decision is made by comparing the current accumulator value with the input analog signal value. If input signal is higher than accumulator value, it outputs one and step up by one until step step up by one. If input signal is lower than accumulator value, it outputs zero and step down by one. So there is a better graph generated by software. We can see the original analog signal is shown in blue color. Integrated step signal is shown in green. Modulated signal is in red. At each sampling point, it will check if it's higher or lower than input analog signal. If analog signal is lower, output zero and step down by one until analog signal is higher. It will output one and step up. There's some issue for data modulation. Overload occurs when the digital wave cannot keep up with the rate of change of the input analog signal. Step size too small will have slope overload. To solve slope overload, we can increase sampling rate. Another method to reduce overload is increasing step size, which is the height at each step up or down. If step size is too large, we will have granularity. Granularity is quantizing noise when step size is too large. The solution, to get a solution, we have to trade off between slope overload and granularity to find the ultimate, ultimate step size. We can get bit error with step size and find the one which gives the lowest bit error. Another method is adaptive delta modulation. It's, a, it's step size is a function of pre previous step size and accumulator value. An adaptive mo delta modulation is beyond the scope of this project. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly go over our, our uh, MATLAB code and show you the results that we got from experimentation. So, the first test that we did was that we kept the, we sampled at um, a frequency that was the same as the input signal. So we kept the sampling frequency constant and we vary the different delta sizes. So through that we ran um, numerous tests for different delta values and we came up with the following result. You're going to hear a quick audio uh, playback of our new modulated signal 
and you're gonna see that it's very um, fuzzy and there is noise because this technique is not perfect and you're gonna see here it in the audio clip so I'm just gonna run the program it takes about five seconds and here we go oh just gonna hit clear all let's try this once more Modulação delta. So there you go. As you heard, there's the fuzziness um, in the background because it is not um, a perfect technique. Um, I'm going to go through the three graphs. The first graph on the very top is our modulated signal in blue um, and the original signal in green in the background. As you can see over here, our modulated signal does not uh, cover all the signal. There's a little bit of green over here and over here as well. Um, but we did our best to find the optimal delta size. In the bottom left corner, we have our original signal. And in the bottom right corner, we have our error percentage um, versus our delta size. So if you follow the curve, the optimal delta size occurs at a minimum, which is right around here. And this value is around 0 0.017 or so. Next what we wanted to test out was keeping the delta constant but varying the, the sampling um, rate. So we wanted to test, see what would happen if we varied the sampling rate this time. So I'm going to run the program and I'm just going to wait for the graph, which I think is over here. There we go. Exit that. Right. So by keeping the delta size constant and varying the number of samples, as you can see, the percent the error decreased as um, we took a lot more samples. Um, this is because with more samples, um, you are getting more accuracy as the delta modulation is able to follow um, and track the signal better. So that is the end of our project. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Thank you for listening.